Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar to bring you to today's presentation, which is social media for startups. Before we get a thing, um, we are going to record this event and we'll send a link to everyone for future viewing. Um, there's some information in there that uh, um, have you uh, be able to obtain without trying to make comments. Uh, we'd like to share just a little bit about the Louisville Small Business Development Center itself. Our offices are located in downtown Louisville. However, we do cover a nine county region, starts in Jefferson and Bullock counties and east all the way to Carroll and Owen counties. Um, staff members that are uh, uh, statewide network with locations that serve all 120 counties in Kentucky and Network is part of a national network servicing the entire U.S. We are funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration and the University of Kentucky. We receive additional support, however, from uh, Greater Louisville Inc. and Louisville Forward, which is part of the federal government. No cost assistance in areas like um, market research. We help with business plan development. Um, financial modeling and projections if you're looking for uh, funding and that's one of the core things we do is identifying pre-venture and growth capital for uh, business owners that's really to build their specific needs. Visit our website at louisvillesmallbusiness.com to request one-on-one -on -one assistance and to see other upcoming events. This is our last event of 2019. So uh, the Small Business Development Center itself will uh, close at the end of to welcome Elisa Bloco. So Elisa, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and she over. Yes, sure. Thank you, Janet. Just a sec. Yes, okay. Well, welcome everybody to today's webinar, Social Media Marketing for Startups. And let me just briefly introduce myself before we start. So my name is Alisa Poco and I'm marketing strategist and small business and startup mentor. Um, I possess 16 years of experience in multiple industries, mainly in the marketing and sales field. I hold a bachelor of degree in marketing and I'm also a startup owner at Your Biz Mentor, as well as volunteer business mentor at SCORE. Uh, who is one of the co-organizers of this webinar as well. And it's one of the largest nationwide um, nonprofit organizations providing free business mentoring services for mainly uh, small businesses and startups. Uh, I am also a workshop and webinar facilitator and an in-house B2B marketing strategy trainer. I live in Louisville in Kentucky. Slide, you can see uh, social media for startups uh, in review. Um, and today's webinar, I'm going to elaborate the topics of digital media, social media, brand management, content strategy, automation tools, and three major marketing trends in 2019-2020. Now, uh, let's just start before we go to this slide of uh, seeing the difference between traditional and digital marketing. Let's just start with uh, the definition of marketing. Well, marketing is uh, a science just like any other science, but this is a science uh, about the customers and their needs. It is actually a science of determining what our client needs are and how we can fulfill them. It is a business process of creating relationships with our clients. And it incorporates all the activities undertaken by company to promote buying and selling product or service. To know as well the difference between traditional and digital marketing. Um, they are both used uh, by larger companies. And when it comes to the smaller companies and startups, I would say um, some of the traditional marketing uh, tools are, are used like business cards or uh, any type of printing uh, marketing collateral is also uh, a part of the traditional marketing. So on the left side, you can see 
types of digital marketing and uh, digital marketing tools. And on the right side, you can see traditional uh, marketing uh, tools. And uh, in the in between, you can actually see the process that buyers are going through in uh, their buying decisions. Now, the first the first step in this process is actually awareness, and it is about um, increasing the visibility and the awareness of your own company, of your product or service, even if you are service-oriented of your own personal brand. So how can people buy from you if they don't know that you don't exist? So the goal is to show to your potential buyers that you exist and where are you located, uh, located and what are your products or services all about. Then you will enter the stage of consideration, evaluation and conversion of your clients. And as you can see, in each of these stages, there are certain digital marketing uh, tools that you can use, uh, for example, for creating awareness, blogs, videos, SEOs, social media, infographics. So let's just dive uh, deep a little bit into the digital marketing and social media marketing. Digital marketing is actually the marketing of products or services using digital technologies on the internet. And social media is just a part of digital marketing. Um, both digital marketing and social media and traditional marketing, brand management, they are all parts of the marketing. So digital marketing incorporates all types of online marketing, such as social media, search engine optimization, blogging, webinars, podcasts, and much more. And here are some of the most famous social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube. Now, social media is an online platform, website, or technology that allows users to communicate and share information publicly. So even uh, some other social media platforms that are not mentioned here uh, belong to this, um, to, to this part as well. Now, I would like to mention a little bit more about the SEO, a search engine optimization. Uh, once you choose the right social media platform, and we will talk more about it in the next slides on how to choose social right social media platform for your business and uh, what type of content marketing to use. Uh, of course, you will need to take care of the uh, search engine optimization, uh, and that's basically um, how you rank on or your company ranks on uh, search engines. And the number one search engine nowadays is Google. And number two uh, search engine, believe it or not, is YouTube. Uh, so some of the things that you can do, and it is all for free, so which is especially relevant for startups with limited budget, uh, and the things that will improve your uh, rankings on search engines, and they are part of the SEO techniques. The first step would be, I would say, creating a Google My Business uh, page, uh, which is also for free, where you will uh, mention all the details about your company, and you can actually utilize this page for is the best SEO for your company and for, for, for promoting your product launches, information about uh, your products or services, and you can do that constantly. And the best way if you post like uh, 
in a perfect situation, if you would post 13 posts per month, that would be really great and it would bring you very good results. So why is that relevant? It's because 80% um, of all searches online are of local intent. So when, if you have already established your own company, when somebody is searching for you online by your company name, then the first thing that will appear is actually your Google My Business page. So you can see the relevance of it for the SEO. Uh, the next thing that you can do, and it's also for free, is to um, use free business directories and register your company and all the details about your company there. You can also use um, you can use Yelp for uh, free as a free directory, and uh, on your own website, use uh, meta tags, headlines, and keywords as well as the blog to improve your SEO results. Now, blogging is also a part of the SEO, and especially when it comes to the so-called internal linking and backlinking. So this is something that improves your search engine results as well. Internal linking is actually when you have your own website, website for your company and then let's say uh, as a part of your menu you have a blog as well and you write a blog post and then um, within that blog post you are actually um, providing a link to another part of your website so for example at the end of that post you can grab the clients and provide them a link to uh, if you are let's say an e-commerce business, you can provide a link to check some of the products that you've been um, writing about in that blog post. Uh, and these products are also um, on your own website. So this is called, or you can provide a link to your contact form and, and give a call to action to uh, fulfill a survey or fulfill a contact form or similar. And backlinking is actually when some other external sources out of your um, company website are uh, linking your website uh, in their, let's say, blog, or if you are guest blogging and providing a link to a website, or even on your social media channels where you are providing a link to a website. So this is called backlinking, and it also improves your um, SEO results. And of course, uh, webinars by Prub, where you can, well, now uh, there are more ways of, of uh, improving your SEO, but this is just a brief for you to know. And at the end of the, at the end of the webinar, I will mention that one of the major trends nowadays is voice search. Uh, and it's a really big part of the SEO. Um, and that's because even in 2019, although the predictions were that this will happen in 2020, that more than 50% of all online searches will be conducted through voice search, it's already happening now. So voice search, incorporate voice search in your SEO strategy. And uh, the way to do it, the simple way to do it uh, is uh, just one suggestion is to incorporate in your website as a part of your menu, frequently asked questions. And then this frequently asked questions would actually uh, would be all about the, um, the searches that uh, you will think in the way how your clients are conducting searches by voice search online. So for example, a written search is different than voice search. In written search, somebody would type in Google, uh, if they're looking for a restaurant, they would say, um, uh, and in Google, let's say, they would say, they would just type two, three words, like find a restaurant, Google. But when they're conducting a voice search, it's um, 
a long form search so it's in the form of a sentence so they would say something like find me a um, vegetarian restaurant in downtown Louisville, let's say so just this is something that you would need to keep in mind while conduct while uh, incorporating voice search in your SEO strategy um, now we'll uh, of course we will deep dive into the social media but prior to doing that um, what I, I understand that it is uh, very much confusing all this social media world and uh, it's uh, there are so many uh, social media platforms and uh, you need to choose uh, from uh, all these uh, opportunities you need to choose one or two and uh, perfectly you would need to choose from two to four social media platforms and it's challenging really even for us marketeers nowadays because uh, things in uh, digital marketing and online are changing constantly on a daily basis and it really requires from us to learn on a daily basis as well so where to start Simply, this is what I always say to my clients, start with your buyer. Everything starts with the buyer. And marketing, everything is about buyer. So determine who your buyer persona is. And the best way to do it is by considering their and um, determining their demographics and psychographics. Demographics such as age, gender, education, location, marital status, ethnicity, and similar, and psychographics such as their values, their personality, interests, attitudes, lifestyles. So once you know who your targeted audience is or who your buyer persona is, then you will start considering which social media platform you should use. And in order to do that, you will not you will need to get known with the social media platforms out there and what are their characteristics. Now I need to really before uh, I explain a little bit more about that, I need to mention that all this webinar is about how uh, small businesses and startups with a limited budget can use um, social media for free as their promotional tools and it is all about the organic reach so unpaid unpaid reach of your targeted audience uh, it is the web webinar is not about paid ads at all um, so once you you determine who your uh, bio persona is then you are about to choose social media uh, platform now i'll just mention some of the social media statistics in 2019 and this keep changing and um, let's say just uh, related to the Instagram who has which has uh, 1 billion monthly active users Facebook 2.45 billion users YouTube 2 billion monthly active users LinkedIn 655 million users and its main B2B social media platform Twitter, 126 million daily users, Pinterest, 300 million. Um, and not only the statistics, but you really need to, uh, you need to be present on the platform to get known well with the, the way that the algorithm of that social media platforms, platform works. And it's really relevant information that nowadays 42% of the world's population uses social media. And that's 3.2 billion users worldwide, according to the nurses. Um, and 90% of the millennials, 77% generation X, and even 48% of baby boomers are active on social media platforms. So now that you know who your bio persona is, think about it, what kind of opportunities it can bring for your business and uh, the increase in your business and sales 
once you know that your buyers are actually out there, they are online and they're on social media. Um, so I'll just uh, mention some of the characteristics of certain social media channels. So let's start with Facebook. Now, Facebook, uh, what you can do about Facebook and that will bring you organic reach, so without paying for the ads and that you can still have some results, is actually creating a Facebook business page. You can do that from your own personal profile, Facebook personal profile, and uh, creating a group, Facebook group, your own Facebook group, where you will actually invite people with similar interests um, uh, or similar values, or those uh, who are your potential uh, targeted audience or your potential buyers, or you will join some other Facebook groups with your uh, potential clientele. Uh, and something that you can use and it's currently booming is Facebook live streaming. Now I understand that it really requires going out of your comfort zone, but at the, on, on the other side, it increases your own credibility and it's relevant and it, it increases trust that your potential clients will have in you as well. And it is relevant, it is relevant that they have trust in you because people buy from people. People don't buy from companies. They will buy from a company because of you. And at the end, I just mentioned Facebook paid ads because I believe that the mix between organic reach, so unpaid reach of your clientele, and paid reach is the best. However, the way I said, paid reach is really short term in the way that it will bring, bring results almost immediately or uh, in a short period of time. But again, it will also last, last for um, less period of time than let's say organic reach, which will, um, and you need to keep pay for it in order to have results. On the other side, when it comes to the organic reach, which we will uh, create by, by creating and implementing the right content marketing strategy on social media, then it is really long, of a long term and it is all about building relationships with your potential clients and providing value to them. So now just to uh, give you an idea about the most engaging type of content on social media, it's video. As I've already mentioned, uh, Facebook uh, live streaming is one of the ways uh, to reach your targeted audience, to build trust and build rapport and relationships with them. And as you can see the, from this research, uh, from Batsumo, um, the best performing post uh, on Facebook is actually a video post. And it's no wonder since video is really booming on social, social media and it's the, um, it's the type of content which is booming on LinkedIn as well. And uh, it is the type of content which is preferred by our audience uh, on social media. Um, now it could be because uh, we are all so busy and uh, um, also when people are scrolling for the content on their social media feed uh, on their mobile devices and uh, when the video content uh, that they scroll down is it is usually muted. It's very much recommendable that once you post your video content on social media, you also provide a transcription so that that people can actually read what your video post is about, and then it may uh, trigger curiosity, and they might watch the video at the very end. So, out of all of these social media platforms. 
which one is the right one for you. I will just share one uh, example of one of my clients. She is in the uh, retail field and um, her business is actually very successful. However, she is um, very much aware that her business can and sales can increase much more if she were, was uh, present on the present with her business online as well. And she just uh, used one social media platform and never got any result from it. She used this social media platform for three years and uh, she just chose it because it was it was really good for presenting her products. Uh, it was a visual platform and it was Instagram. Now, her targeted audience were women above 50, 55 years of age, even 60 and 70 years old. And one thing she didn't know, Instagram is a social media platform mainly used by a younger audience. So, uh, the demographics of uh, this social media platform um, don't really match her targeted audience. Instagram is mainly used by most of the users on Instagram are um, up to the age of 30 or 35. There are certain small percentages of people um, above that age, but again, it's mainly used uh, by its users up to 30 years of age. Um, actually, 59% of Instagram users are under the age of 30, according to Statista. Um, and also, videos get 21.2% more interactions compared to images on Instagram as well. So, however, I just mentioned this example in order to illustrate how important it is to pay attention uh, on your bio persona while choosing your social media channel and to have an insight into that social media channel as well. Um, so, uh, when it comes to some other social media channels, um, let's say Pinterest, Pinterest is mainly used by women. And, and uh, uh, it is actually uh, perfect, both Pinterest and Instagram are the most visual platforms, social media platforms out there, and they're actually perfect for showcasing products. Um, and uh, on Instagram, for example, fashion products or even food products and similar. Uh, however, in this specific case, this lady uh, couldn't uh, actually shouldn't choose this platform just because her targeted audience wasn't there. But if you are in the business of, let's say, selling kids' fashion, then one thing you should know that most of the Pinterest users are females, and 80% of Pinterest women Pinterest users are mothers. So that makes it as a perfect platform for this type of, for promoting this type of business. Um, Twitter is a B2B, mainly B2B, a social media platform. However, in the recent years, it actually started dropping and uh, dropping in this in its popularity and uh, the platform that is really taking over and it's now number one social media platform for b2b oriented businesses and service oriented businesses uh it's linkedin so as already mentioned it has 655 million users globally and are from 200 countries globally, and there are 30 million 
business pages on LinkedIn. So it is actually the perfect platform for all service-oriented professionals uh, like or agencies like real estate agencies or insurance brokers, mortgage brokers, financial professionals, and similar. And most of the LinkedIn users have uh, their uh, average annual income above 70, uh, 70,000 or even 100,000 uh, annually. It's also a perfect platform for building a personal brand and uh, uh, positioning yourself as a thought leader in your industry. Uh, no matter which platform you choose, uh, what's really relevant is that you keep in mind that social proof nowadays uh, means a lot. So reviews, recommendations, testimonials means mean really a lot because now the trust into the companies is an all-time low. So really what people trust nowadays is reviews, testimonials, and keep that in mind. So if you are on LinkedIn, ask for recommendations from, from your uh, clients, from your previous colleagues, and uh, optimize your profile, and create a business page on LinkedIn, and so many people ask me whether they should have, if they have a company and they want to be present on LinkedIn, whether they should have a personal or company profile there. So I always say both. That's just for the sake of the credibility. Because once you put the name of your company as a, as a part of your experience, in the experience part of your LinkedIn profile, then there is an icon of the company. And of course, you will be putting the logo of your company there. And the only way to put the logo is by creating uh, your um, LinkedIn business page. Um, yes, so the way to start with social media strategy is to determine your goals, identify customers, target social media channels to so choose the right one for you, choose the right content types, publishing frequency, needed resources, paid advertising approach if necessary, uh, and customer service. If you really want to deep dive into the content marketing, then you would set monthly social media goals, like what you really want to achieve on social media. If you want to increase traffic, followers, subscribers, or sales. Decide on content mix relevant for your social media channels. Create the content calendar, add content to your calendar, create, schedule, publish your social media posts. Uh, so I must say, what, since uh, all this webinar, it is about uh, organic reach. So when we say organic reach, it's an unpaid reach, and it is actually all about the content creation. So it is about the way to reach your clients. So reaching your clients on social media in an organic way is by con right content marketing strategy. As Bill Gates said, content is king. king. So once you choose the right type of social media platform, now it depends from your industry, whether you are, and also whether you are business to customer oriented, whether you're business to business oriented. Then as we said, it's, it all starts from the buyer, whether your buyer is using that social media platform. And then once you take all this into consideration, you will choose your prime social media platform because uh, creating content on any social media platform is really, um, uh, it, it, 
it demands a lot of effort and it is time consuming. Um, and that's why I will suggest some of the post schedulers and automation marketing tools that you can use just to make your life easier online. So once you choose your um, social media platform, you'll choose what's your first prime social media platform that you will be spending most of the time and uh, most of the, of the time on. And it is recommendable to choose from two to four other social media in, in general to, to be present on at least two to four social media platforms and uh, just because of the social proof and credibility and also because it gives you uh, an opportunity to share more information about your company and to uh, to present yourself uh, with the logo and the, the company name and provide a link to the website. And it also improves your SEO. So that you will choose the type of content that you will be posting on um, your social media platform, uh, whether it's image, video, text posts, articles, blogs, live stream, ebooks, email marketing, e-courses, and similar. And it also depends from the uh, social media platform that you will choose. So for example, Snap Snapchat is mainly used by a very young audience. And uh, it is the, the whole platform is about posting uh, just a few seconds long videos. On the other side, if you are posting video on Facebook, it should be in the length between three to five minutes. On LinkedIn, uh, the best performing videos are up to two minutes long, although the platform actually provides you an opportunity to post 10 minutes long video. But uh, on the other side, you are the consumers of this content. Uh, and the research has shown that the most, the best performing uh, video content is up to two minutes maximum, even one minute long. Uh, the next thing that you need to take care of, so once you choose the type of content that you will post and it's, it will be posted according to the right social media platform, um, you will uh, provide value. This is very crucial to provide value in your content to your customers or clients. So it could be in the type of, in the form of solution, tip, education, infographic, or similar. And um, the type of content that is being shared on Pinterest is the, the vertical design, vertical designed images, for example. And uh, you can use free graphic design tools like Canva to create social media posts. And then one of the major trends, as I've mentioned, is live streaming on Facebook, um, on Facebook Live, on LinkedIn Live, although LinkedIn Live is now in beta stage, so not all the users have uh, LinkedIn Live, but it definitely gives a lot of credibility for your brand and increases your visibility and brand awareness. So if by any chance you would have access to it, use it. Uh, blogs and even Amazon Live nowadays. Um, you can also use Google Trends and Basumo to search for trending content. So these are all free tools that you can use. And within your content, incorporate keywords for better SEO and incorporate keywords that you want your company to be found for online in your website as well and in your blogs and use hashtags now the use of hashtags is also a little bit different within the social media different social media channels so for example the best performing posts uh, have uh, currently currently have on linkedin like up to five up to five uh, hashtags. And on the other side, you can use 20, 30 or so hashtags on Instagram for your content to be 
Ah, so why, why actually, why are we using hashtag? Hash, so certain hashtags, uh, um, every hashtag has a certain number of followers. So one hashtag could have 50 followers and the other hashtag could have 35 million followers. So the point is to mark the content that we are, we are posting on social media with the hashtags which uh, are related to the type of content that we are posting and at the same time have as many uh, followers as, as, as we can find uh, for the search certain hashtag. Now, once you post uh, content on any social media platform, you need to actually nurture the content. You need to nurture your post and to interact with clients. It is not just you post and you forget about it, especially, let's say, on platforms like LinkedIn. And uh, uh, you actually want to interact with your clientele. You want to know uh, their opinion about uh, something that you have posted. Uh, so interaction is inevitable and uh, you need to nurture the post, especially on LinkedIn, for uh, one hour within the posting. Since the LinkedIn algorithm works in the way that uh, the more engagement in the form of likes, comments, shares, similar, you get on your post within the first hour, then there is a possibility that your, you will get a trending hashtag. So if you create the content on LinkedIn and post it, and uh, by posting this content, you use, let's say, up to five hashtags, there is a possibility that uh, and if you get more engagement on this post within the first hour, then there is a possibility that LinkedIn will mark your content under one hashtag as a trending content. So what does that mean? That means that your content will be actually pushed by LinkedIn for more people uh, to view it. Um, so that's why nurturing posts is relevant as well. And you need to know what is the best time to post to certain uh, uh, social media platforms. Um, let's say on LinkedIn, uh, the research has shown that the most uh, attraction get the posts uh, posted on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, in morning hours. And uh, in general, posting on social media, um, the best time for posting on social media is uh, in the morning prior, in the time when people are about to go to work or prior to that, um, during the lunch break and at the end of their work day. Uh, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is to have a compelling headline for your post. So some of the headlines that perform good are those which have uh, numbers in it. So for example, five content marketing tips, let's say. Also use alt tags for images that you post on social media and keep in mind of posting frequency. For example, on social media platforms, like YouTube, um, usually vloggers announce how frequently they are posting their content. So they say something like, um, stay updated with their uh, uh, monthly posts or uh, every Tuesday we will uh, post another content or similar. And it has been proven that, that long form content blocks rank higher in search engines and get more shares. And nowadays, as a long-form content is believed to one which has 3,000 up to 10,000 words. Yeah, it's simply like that. So this is just, uh, these are just some of the examples of the trending hashtags, my trending hashtags on LinkedIn uh, within certain, um, certain for certain content 
let's say for business planning, sales, motivation, and small business, and similar. So just to touch base, brand management and personal branding. Before you even go and uh, go out there, before you uh, start your online journey, you will need to uh, take care of your branding. And uh, if you are a service-oriented professional, then it's really relevant for you to start with your personal branding and for the companies uh, with company branding. So, as I mentioned, there's company branding and personal branding. So, just some of the things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to brand management is to start with the company name, and the company name should be related to your industry, should associate with industry, like when you, when somebody's, uh, when you say your company name to somebody, they should be able to rec recognize uh, your industry or what you do from the name. That would be like a perfect option. And then keep in mind on the domain name, domain name because your domain name, the website, should be the same name as the name of your company. Now, nowadays, it's really so challenging to do that because for a startup company, we just, uh, we're just about to start a company, it's really challenging to find a free name which is this isn't already taken and create a logo logo you can create uh with the free apps as well or you can outsource graphic designer but there are so many free apps out there website you can also outsource to create a website but you can do it by yourself as well you can use Vix for it or similar and another thing is company color because marketing is so much related to the psychology and uh, uh, when it comes to the company color as well you know colors are perceived uh, differently by people so um, they don't have the same meaning for example red color is passionate energetic uh, it's all about action uh, yellow color is about uh, positivity, it's about uh, bringing uh, tension. That's why you see that on, on uh, the sales signs so when you go to the store and there is a sales in it and uh, in the traffic also you can see for attention signs and similar. So branding is important for differentiating your company and yourself from your competitors, for recognizability, as a social proof for storytelling. And personal branding is important because, especially for service providers, as I already mentioned, um, who are targeting other business professionals, uh, because people buy from people, people don't buy from companies. And uh, we need to create trust and uh, uh, report, report with our clients. And this is all about social selling nowadays. Um, and personal branding is a mix, actually, of your personal and professional values. And LinkedIn is the ideal platform for personal branding. And please keep in mind, again, social proofs, reviews, recommendations, testimonials are very good for your business, increasing trust and credibility. If you would like to learn more about the company colors and psychology of color in branding and marketing, you can read one of my articles on LinkedIn. Um, now I'll just touch base the automation tools, uh, automation tools in marketing. So uh, since it's, it is really time consuming uh, for all of us to create posts uh, and to do that consistently, um, and it's really rele relevant to do it consistently because that will bring actually bring these results. Um, However, we can use some free tools to make our life easier, such as for social media posts, uh, let's say social media posts, schedulers like Hootsuite, Buffer, Cost Schedule. And uh, 
we will have also an insight into the uh, fans' engagement or our followers, uh, or connections engagement uh, for all of our social media on these post schedulers. Um, and uh, mainly, uh, you can use a free version for one month, and then the, there is a certain uh, pricing for, for each of them. And then uh, you can also use marketing automation tools like Marketo or HubSpot uh, for uh, keyword search or to find content that performs the best. You can use BuzzSumo, uh, Google Trends. And uh, uh, before I jump into the other one, I just want to mention that on all social media platforms, you can use insights. Um, and so, and always try to post native content, genuine native content, if it's video, upload directly video, because the way that uh, the algorithm of almost each of these social media platforms works is that they prefer uh, native content uploaded directly to that social media channel and not really the links that you share in your post which will lead uh, lead the, the users of that social media platform to another social media platform. So for example, if you share a link of YouTube post on your LinkedIn post, then uh, this post on LinkedIn will not get a lot of views just because the LinkedIn algorithm works in that way that they don't support their users um, being uh, directed to another social media platform. This works with the Facebook as well. So uh, other automation tools in marketing or the some automation tools that you can use are also Canva for graphic design, the way that free graphic design tool, Bitly for uh, URL links. Uh, it is the URL link that you can link shortener. Uh, video editors, if you decide to uh, step out of your comfort zone and start creating videos, especially videos of yourself, talking about your product or service, uh, you can use um, apps like UCAT, OpenShot, Camtasia, Lightworks, and then for transcripts on your videos, you can use Subtitle, Pick, Revcom, or similar. Or as a free survey tool, you can use SurveyMonkey, uh, link tracking to monitor traffic to your site from your social media platforms. One tab you can use for do. This is for those who use multiple tabs frequently, like me, like if you open multiple tabs and doing some research for, and then having like 20 open tabs, then you can uh, use this one tab tool and uh, it will actually, you will only have one tab open and under one tab, you'll have all your um, other searches. You can use Calendly as a pre-scheduling tool for phone meetings, uh, Feedly and pre-stock images. You can you can use Burst Shopify, for example, as a source for pre-stock images and some of the other paid versions, Photoshop, Adobe, Spark, and many other tools that you can use for research and that will make your life easier. And as a social media measurement tools, you can use for social listening, um, for searching, analyzing what's happening with your customers on social media. You can use BrandWatch, Radian6, uh, Samozos, and for competitor intelligent, uh, intelligence uh, to monitor performance of competitors' content, you can use Unmetric and Social Bakers. For social analysis and monitoring tools, you can use, uh, which will help you realize what's working on each of your social media channels or not. You can use Simply Measured and Sprout Social. For customer service analytic tools, Converse Social and Salesforce, for example. These are just uh, examples, and I'm just giving you an example. Uh, and uh, at the end, uh, just to mention three major marketing trends in 2019-2020, and this is just my own opinion, and it is really video 
video. So if you want to get more exposure to your brand, company, if you have just started your own company and you want to bring that visibility and awareness, then uh, start with video. If you would like to learn more about uh, the content strategy, a uh, video content strategy on LinkedIn, you can uh, read one of my LinkedIn articles about uh, this topic. Um, and you can also, uh, let's connect uh, on LinkedIn and you can follow my hashtag your mentor for free tips on how to use this platform. Um, as I already mentioned, voice search, it's really something that is booming right now and it's a big part of your SEO. You simply need to incorporate that into your SEO strategy and podcasts. Podcasts are so popular nowadays and it can also uh, bring a higher awareness of your brand and your personal brand and it can um, help you get more collaboration requests and a potential client inquiries as well. So at the end, I would like to thank you for your attention and I would like to wish you happy holidays and I would like to invite you to reach out either to uh, a score uh, where you can find uh, free business mentoring services um, from the professionals from different fields of work uh, and reach out to a small business development center for different resources and information that can be very useful for your business. And if you have any additional questions that we cannot, we are limited with the time and we potentially cannot answer today, you can reach out to me at my email address listed here. So Janet, do we have any questions? Cool, cool. Well, I don't see anybody that's posted anything, but uh, um, Elisa, if you want to go back to your last uh, slide there. Yes. I sure. want to reach out directly to Elisa for some uh, particular uh, questions, uh, or if you think of something later that she might be able to help you with. Again, um, look for her, look for her uh, LinkedIn. She has a lot of great content there. Um, otherwise, we want to thank everyone for joining us today, and we hope everyone has a uh, good holiday season, and we'll see you in 2020. Again, we'll send you the recording of these events, so you'll have uh, all those listings of those tools that she's mentioned. Please thank everyone. We'll thank you. Thank you, Janet, and happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.